Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Idahoan Show. By this point, I have done a number of videos documenting the results of different uh, rounds of experimental sabotaged ammunition. And from time to time, I get people asking me in the comments, what's the point? You know, why would we expect sabots to offer any kind of an advantage? You know, why bother experimenting with sabotaged ammunition? Now, at a meta-philosophical level, I think the answer to that question is that by trying things that are new and different, you have admittedly a higher risk of it not working, but you also have a finite probability of discovering something that is new and better. Whereas if you just do the same old tried and true thing that everyone else is doing, then yeah, you may have a lower risk of failure, but you have a zero probability of discovering any new beneficial phenomenon. Uh, so that is the premise of all basic research, is that in order to advance the state of the art or discover new things that can benefit the industry or mankind, you have to try new things. And so I would kind of turn that question around and say, why would you ever not try new and different things? Um, I mean, I can understand a consumer buying a tried and true product to use it as originally designed for, you know, for a specific application, but if you're trying something out and making a documentary video about it to share with the world, why would you bother doing that if you don't have something original to present? So, from my perspective, if you're trying something that's new and different and documenting the results, in this case on video, uh, then simply adding one more data point to mankind's body of available knowledge, in many cases, is all the justification you need. But in the case of sabotaged ammunition, I do actually have a number of specific scientific reasons why I would expect it to be advantageous. For one thing, as you refine a manufacturing process and scale it up to ever larger volumes of production, eventually you reach a point where the price of the finished article per unit closely correlates to its weight and the cost per weight of the raw materials from which it's made. So, in the case of ammunition, a lighter bullet is a cheaper bullet. Uh, and sabots allow you to use lighter bullets, so sabotaged ammunition theoretically should be more cost effective. And what's not to love about affordable ammunition? Secondly, uh, if you think back to Physics 101, if you accelerate an object over some distance, the kinetic energy that it acquires will be equal to the work done on it over that distance, which in turn is the product of the force applied times the distance over which that force was applied. Uh, in the case of a bullet accelerating down a gun barrel, uh, the distance over which the force is applied is the length of the barrel, and the force would be the product of the pressure in the chamber times the cross-sectional area of the bullet, which in turn is proportional to the square of the caliber. So, based on elementary Newtonian physics, we can say that the kinetic energy of a bullet is proportional to the barrel length of the gun that it was fired from, uh, the operating pressure of the cartridge, and the square of the bore diameter. Now, kinetic energy, in turn, is proportional to mass and the square of velocity. So a bullet with a given amount of kinetic energy uh, could either have a larger mass and a lower velocity, or a higher velocity and a smaller mass. And higher velocity means flatter trajectory, which can contribute to better practical accuracy at long range. So there are some advantages to having a lighter bullet uh, with a given amount of kinetic energy. So if you think about starting with a traditional straight case large caliber rifle cartridge with a very large heavy bullet, and then transitioning to a modern bottleneck cartridge, uh, you've got a much smaller, lighter bullet, 
which allows you to get much higher velocity at uh, comparable kinetic energy, but you're also reducing the bore diameter considerably, which if you don't increase either barrel length or chamber pressure is going to cause your kinetic energy to drop considerably as well. And in the case of most bottleneck rifle cartridges, this problem has been solved by considerably increasing the chamber pressure over traditional straight case cartridges. But that does still impose some practical limitations on minimum barrel length and maximum kinetic energy for bottleneck cartridges. But if instead you keep the same straight case cartridge and you switch to a sabotaged bullet, now you've got the same lighter bullet as the bottleneck cartridge without reducing the bore diameter. So you can keep the same kinetic energy with the same pressure and the same barrel length. Alternatively, you could increase the chamber pressure comparable to the bottleneck round and either have a lot more kinetic energy or shorten the barrel considerably and still have the same kinetic energy. So in theory, sabotaged ammunition can provide you with a round that is flatter shooting, uh, more powerful in the sense of having more kinetic energy, uh, less expensive, and that works in smaller, more compact firearms relative to traditional ammunition. Uh, now, unfortunately, realizing a lot of these advantages in practice has proven more difficult than I had hoped, uh, and I'm really getting close to the end of the development work that I can do on sabotaged ammunition with the resources that I have at this time. But the theoretical advantages are significant enough that it would have been foolish not to at least explore the possibilities. So hopefully this gives you a better understanding of why I've been experimenting with sabotaged ammunition. And until next time, thank you for watching The Idahoan Show.